grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, wisdom to know the difference. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Let's go through a normal drill here. Uh, we're going to start with that. Okay. We got Jasmine. Alan. Right there. Okay. Aiden. Matt. Emily. Abigail. Ashley. Ashley. Anna. Anna. Got Donovan. John Hurley. John Hurley. Quattro. Cameron. Rebecca. John Cost. Right there, John Cost. Kate. That's Sophia. Maria. I got Sam. Sam, no glasses today. All right, whew, all right, man. I was starting to worry about. Okay, I'm, I'm, jo I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay, Christina. 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 Kristen. Kristen. Sarah. One of these days, Sarah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that, get that pattern down. Tristan. That's Tristan. Okay. Caleb. Oh. Kyle. Oh, I never call us. Okay, Jordan. Right there. Cool. Antonia. Okay. Deshaun. Jonah. Landon. And Anthony. So we were supposed to tell you guys, yay, good job. We're, we're, everybody's uh, doing and, and complying with what we're doing here for the most part. For the whole, the whole college, students, faculty, staff, we're all doing a great job. So keep doing this. It's a pain. Keep doing this. I don't like it. I'm ready for it. I'm like, God, can you like do something and, and get rid of this thing? You know, you can do that if you want to. But um, so let's keep doing that. There are big schools that have are shut down. And everybody's at home. Doing school through their little screen. It's 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 fun for a few days, but after a while you sort of get burned out on it. So thank you. And let's keep doing that. Keep throwing up prayers. We're working together. Speaking of working together, quiz. Let's go over the quiz questions. Uh, most people did really, really, I'm not finished grading all the quizzes yet, but um, all right. So let's do these real quickly. Which following elements is not commonly found in living organisms? Silicone. All right, now this is kind of tricky. Tricky. It's tricky to take a quiz online. No? Quiz online all the time. It's tricky. Yo. But anyways, an atom with a net negative charge must have more blank than blank. Electrons than protons. Now, electrons than neutrons, that would make it negative. But it's it's the it's the 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 ratio right of electrons to protons that determines whether or not it's going to have a positive or a negative charge. Okay, rank these in. That was okay. What's the strongest? Double covalent. What's the next strongest? Then we got. Then we got. And then what's the one that's actually below that? We, haven't, we talked a little bit about on Monday. Hydro 
phobic exclusion. That's also considered, it's not a bond, but it is an interaction that pulls molecules together. Okay. So just remember, in general, it goes covalent, ionic, hydrogen, hydrophobic. And then within covalent, as you increase the number of covalent bonds, that makes that bond stronger, right? Okay. <clears throat> a water is a water. A water, when water is attracted to other molecules that are not water, the attraction is called adhesion. Adhesion. Glue, tape, it's an adhesive. Sticks to something else. When water molecules bond to water molecules instead of other molecules, that's called cohesion. Co means with, sticking with, sticking with. So cohesion. And when a bunch of water molecules are uh, uh, exhibiting the <clears throat> property of cohesion, bonding with each other, at the top of um, a body of water, that contributes to what property? Surface tension. All right, cool, good. Metric, awesome. It's letter A, good job. You went from milliliters to kiloliters. Almost everybody got that right. Um, this one caused some problems. So, fluorine, which is a, uh, element number what? Number nine. So that tells me that it has nine total electrons, right? Total electrons. When I say valence electrons, what, how does that distinguish total electrons from valence electrons? Uh, I'm gonna get this, maybe. I don't know, is it, wait a minute. Is it Ashley? Yes. Okay, so it's the number of electrons in that outermost shell. The first energy level always has two. So nine's greater than two, so we subtract those two. And then the second energy level, to fill it, how many electrons do I need? Eight. Okay, so seven's less than eight, so the second energy level is, Five, eight, seven. What number is that? Um, so the second energy level is not full. We've only got seven. So I have seven valence electrons. Nine total electrons, seven valence electrons. And we're not going to talk about why that's important. But okay. A molecule that binds to protons when it's dissolved in water and lowers the proton content is called a, an, a base. So bases are proton acceptors in, in very general terms. Acids are proton donors. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about that. Okay, what is it? Polar, nonpolar, un Nonpolar, pol y you can read. What do we got here? Donovan. Well, okay, it's not, it's not nonpolar. Let's go into his notes. Uh, I'm Tristan. It's Polar uncharged. I'm looking for molecule. 
atoms, elements that have different electronegativities next to each other, right? Mainly looking for oxygens and nitrogens. We got a lot of those at the end, so that makes that polar uncharged. And remember, am I looking at, at, the, at this amine group on the left? No. Am I looking at the carboxyl group on the right? No. I'm only looking at the R group. Good. Okay. How about this one? That's the sneaky one. I warned you about this one. What is this one? Anna. Nonpolar. Nonpolar. This is, this is, wait, that's a chicken. Wait. That's the turkey molecule, right? I'm trying to do a turkey, all right? That's, I'm sorry. I can see he's looking like, what is he doing now? I'm trying to imitate a turkey. Should be easy because I, I am kind of a turkey. But anyways, so tryptophan, right? Tryptophan makes you sleepy, whatever. So this is nonpolar. Our amine group is completely surrounded by one of the rest of these functional groups here. Completely surrounded by methyls, right? Methyls, methyl, methyl, methyl. This one is da 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 da. Because we see the minus sign. Beautiful. Okay. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Got a lot of emails about this because you went rectangle, triangle, and then you did this one, and then the star, and then you realize, oh, I got them flipped. I get that. So if you did that, we're going to get one out of, you get one out of two on that. And I'm going to, I have to go back through and grade everything. So if you did that, you get one out of two. I get that. That's kind of sneaky. And I, I didn't mean for it to be sneaky, but I can see where that was confusing. But let's go through these. What group is that? Hi. Hi, Droxel. Hi, Droxel. Good. Amino, what's the main thing I'm looking for here? Nitrogen, right? If you see a nitrogen, think amino. If you see my face, think amino, all right? This is a carbon with a double bond with an oxygen. That's a carbonyl. If it had a hydroxyl at the end, it would be a Carboxyl, and then this one, methyl, okay? This is a beautiful, this is one of those, you put it on a flashcard, you draw it, and you speak it out. You do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it some more. It's got to know it. It's like one plus one is two. You just know it. Why? Because you've done it so many times, you don't have to think about it. You got to know it, all right? Okay. Scientific name is mouses, moose, moose, skulus. Blah, 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 moose species. Please identify any s s mistakes I may have made. The first time I, I used the term moose, moose, skulus, so that's genus and species, both of those words need to be italicized. When it's in Latin, you italicize it. If it's English, you don't. Simple. Species, the word species, is that an English word? Yes, it is. Species is an English word, you don't italicize it. So the second moose is italicized, the word species, not italicized, okay? Now, what if you were to have to hand write that on an exam, what would you do? What was that? Underline what? Everything except the word species. Good. What is it? Does it? 
Yes or no? No. Why? Every, every bond, first of all, what, are, what kind of bonds are these? These are covalent bonds. We get two big categories of covalent bonds. We got blanks and blanks. Polar and nonpolar. So are these polar or nonpolar? They're nonpolar. Why do I know that? Because the, the, both carbon and hydrogen have similar electronegativities, which means that the electron is kind of equally shared between the two. So you have a molecule that's all nonpolar bonds, it can't form any what with water? Hydrogen bonds. In order to form, in order to interact with water, it needs to be able to form hydrogen bonds. Cool. All right. Questions about the quiz? Out there in uh, television land, are you good? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on. Did we finish? Did we finish proteins? Did we finish proteins? We did. We started carbohydrates, right? All right. So let me go on to uh, Okay, chill out for a second. I'm going to stop sharing here for a moment. Okay. Still hear me? You still hear me? Uh oh. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, I can still hear you. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh no, yeah, yeah. I just took a second for me to unmute myself. Sorry. That's all right. Isn't this fun? It's like being on a. How about now? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, good. All right. So we should be seeing up here the worksheet. Um, did you guys print off a copy of this, bring it with you, etc.? How many people actually completed it before you got here? Nobody. Cool. Let's take some time. Let's go through it. We'll take about, uh, it's three pages. We'll do, we'll do page, we're gonna do it page at a time. So just work on the first page for now. Do the first page for now. All right. I can't really walk around and talk to people. That's what I normally do. That is when I'm being normal. So you guys go ahead and work on that. Now we've seen this picture multiple times already, but
way to review what we cover. We can keep working on it because it's posted online. Okay. This first page should be all right. So let's do question one. So you're, you're, you're investigating the properties of a new protein. You determine that this protein has the following sequence of amino acids, blah, 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 blah. So when we're listing, we're talking about the structure of a protein and we're simply talking about the order of amino acids, the order in which the amino acids are in this protein, what level of structure are we talking about? So that's the primary structure. Primary structure, right? That's always primary structure. And then question two is a little bit of a sneaky question, but would this, would this protein, would this, would this molecule be considered an oligopeptide or a polypeptide? Does anyone get that? Okay, uh, we've got, okay, Christina. Okay, so you say oligopeptide, why? Okay, so if it's between 10 and 15 amino acids long, and this has 14, I do believe. Actually, 13. I guess I can't count. So, this is an oligopeptide. I'm not, I am not going to ask you that kind of a question on a test. But the reason I bring it up is because on a test or in class, I may, I may say something like, this is an oligopeptide. What's that? That's a protein of a certain length. That's just to let, give you an idea. Or I'm, I, when we talk about, um, I've already mentioned insulin multiple times. That's a polypeptide. It's a polypeptide hormone between 15 and 100 amino acids in length. Just that we're, we're familiar with the words. Okay, that's important. This figure below shows two different shapes of protein structure. These are examples of what level of structure? Secondary. Alpha helices, beta sheets. Those, those are examples of secondary structure. And what happens is that, for example, as we've said before, in the beta sheet, by the way, the arrow is showing you the direction in which the amino acids are, are assembled. They wrap back and forth in this manner, and then these strands are held together by bonds. And in the alpha helix, the different coils, sections of the coil are held together by bonds. What kind of bonds are those? So when you see something that says bonds for studying purposes, bonds, there's four kinds of interactions we've talked about. Covalence is strongest, ionic, hydrogen, hydrophobic interaction. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So what kind of bonds? Hydrogen bonds, awesome, good. Secondary structure involves hydrogen bonds only. Okay. 
Okay. Ask you all to keep on, keep on trucking. So what I'm asking you for in question five is to identify regions in both the alpha helix Sean. Okay. To identify regions in the alpha helix, the blue on the right, or here in this beta sheet, find some places where you could predict that there would be some hydrogen bonds. All right, take take a few, take a minute or so. Let's take a look at that. And then finish page two. We'll take a minute. Take a minute here. See if you can find some. So secondary structure, alpha helix and beta sheets, the result of the formation of hydrogen bonds between what's and what's of amino acids. Okay, oxygens and hydrogens. Let's be a little, a little more So Anna. Okay. So you mean, oh, bad. Look at that. Close. Is it gonna do that every time, let's say. Yeah, I love it when that happens. As in, I do not at all. So be wary. Um, Virtual people, I'm going to the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm taking off the audio. Don't, don't freak out. A molecule. Sweet. Good work. That holds those together. 
The final folded shape of a protein is due to interactions between what of amino acids? What part? Don't let me down. Come on. What region? Ashley. Landon. Scrambling. Jared? He's like, don't look at me. Jordan, I mean. Jordan. Nope. Okay, Quattro, you're like, you're like just sitting out, stretching out. You're ready. Yep, R groups. Oh, and what kind of structure results from interaction of R groups, matey? Tertiary, right? Because there's a big R in the middle of that one. Tertiary structure. All right, so the final folded shape of a protein is called the tertiary structure. R. Okay. Last. Number eight, just to circle and label two examples of each kind of secondary structure. So that's, we're not gonna cover that per se, but I've got some letters. Let's, let's slide this up here. Now for this one, we're just looking at the bond right here. So for example, for letter A. Those of you out there in uh, virtual world, how you doing with this? Are you following what we're doing? Um, I missed what number six was back behind tertiary structure. Okay. Um, okay, number six is R groups. So oh, that makes six. sense. Yep, yep. Folded, the final folded shape is due to interactions between R groups. And then that final folded shape is called the tertiary structure. Yep. That's the tertiary structure of the protein. And now we're on the, the picture here. So what we're looking at with this purple cartoon would actually be the tertiary structure of this protein, okay? Of the tertiary structure of this protein. So, as we're looking at this, what kind of bond is represented by letter A? What kind of bond is represented by letter A? Let's go to Jasmine, letter A. Hydrogen bond. Who agrees? All right, that's a hydrogen bond. Dead giveaway. It's interaction between the hydrogen on, the, on that molecule up, up there. By the way, what is, the, what is this molecule up there? HOH, that's water. So 
That's not an amino acid, just in case. And then you can look at your um, look at your look at your chart, look at your amino acid chart to fill in the amino acids. Look at the R groups. We're going to check that on Friday, okay? But right now, let's move on to the next bond. What's the next bond that we got going on there? Letter B. Letter B. Letter B. Marie. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Oxygen, nitrogen. It is a hydrogen bond. Good. Boom. How about letter C? Sarah, letter C. Okay. It, it, this bond is represented by little dots, but look at the R groups. What do you see on those? What do you notice about those R groups that are a little bit different than the other, the other ones we've talked about? Okay, they're charged. So we've got the interaction between two oppositely charged R groups. So that's ionic. Awesome. Good. Sweet. Now we've got, this is, this is a tricky one. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I think I gotta, I gotta have to post that, that video. That, that Run DMC video is gonna get posted today. Tricky, tricky. This is a tricky bond. What kind of an inner bond is this? What kind of bond is this, all right? Are you ready, Rebecca? This is hydrophobic interaction. Yes, this is hydrophobic interaction. What's the, so we're looking at this and when you see a ring, <laughs> I gotta go there, the dark Lord Sauron. Anyways, Lord of the Rings, anyone? Anyone, Bueller, Bueller, okay, oh, whatever. So when you see a ring structure, and carbons, which means every covalent bond in this R group is a non-polar covalent bond, which means it cannot interact with water. So when they interact, that's hydrophobic exclusion. What's the reason for that kind of a, an interaction? Well, I'll tell you. Okay, Anthony. That's correct. That's right. That's technically right. And there's a functional reason, too. There's a, fu there's a purpose for this. When this protein, this may be a protein that has part of this protein may actually be in a plasma membrane. And you might recall from general bio, when you had biology in high school, that the, the, the interior, so it's two layers. We've got these polar layer on the inside and outside, and the middle is all nonpolar. So in, in a lot of proteins that are interacting with the plasma membrane, there's regions of, the, of those proteins where you have nonpolar um, amino acids that help it interact with the plasma membrane. Or this could just simply be a way that, that this region, this little loop area can come together. Good. Hydrophobic interaction. How about letter E? That's hydrogen bond. F. Anthony. That's a covalent bond. Yes.
If you put disulfide bridge, that would work. But it is a covalent bond. So this helps us maybe also understand that concept that we've talked about multiple times. Secondary structure is the result of hydrogen bonding only. Tertiary structure can result from the formation of covalent, ionic, hydrogen, and hydrophobic exclusion bonds or interactions with other R groups. Yes, Ashley. Oh, thank you. Okay, good. So I'd go back, take a look at your, um, take a look at your, your amino acids, fill those names in, <clears throat> see if the categories that they belong to, if it makes sense, right? So if, it's a, if this is a hydrophobic exclusion, hopefully for letter D, those amino acids are in the nonpolar group. So take a look at all of those amino acids. Make sure that, that, that the, the answers we've covered today actually make sense to you. And you gotta know those, you gotta be able to identify the R group and know is it nonpolar, polar, uncharged, or is it charged? So a lot of that is, again, flashcards over and over again. If you do Quizlet, do that. Okay, questions? Okay. Ah, uh, we timed out, man. That's okay. All right. So let's, let's actually, oh. All right. Again, I realize that maybe we're going a little more slowly than the other. I don't know if we are going more slowly than the other class, but we, we might be. I don't care. All right. Let's get back to our sugars. So now we've reviewed. We're going to hit on this just a little bit. Just a little bit. So the monomers are called monosaccharides. Triose is three carbons. Pentose is five carbons. Hexose is six carbons. Don't look at the shape. You must count the carbons. And what's one of the functions of glucose? Body uses it to make ATP. Yo, okay. Disaccharides, we talked about this. All right, we talked about that. Now let's talk about, so we're gonna, so one classification or one category of polymers are the disaccharides. They have a very specific function, which is basically to protect those sugars, to keep them from being broken down until they reach the place in the plant or the animal where they're needed. It's more the plant, okay? I guess, nope, animal. So anyways, polysaccharides are gonna have different functions. And before we start, we need to talk about the monomers that are used to make polysaccharides. We're only gonna talk about two. They're both glucose, but one is called alpha glucose. The other is called beta glucose. 
And you may notice that the only difference between alpha glucose and beta glucose, well, it's highlighted for you here, is that an alpha glucose, the hydroxyl is below the carbon. And in beta glucose, the hydroxyl is above the carbon, right? This is a three dimensional molecule. Because these hydroxyls are in different orientations in the ring, it gives it a different structure, which means it's probably going to impact its function. And what it does is it, it impacts the kind of bonds that can form. And that is going to really change the shape of the, of the polymer. The bond between that holds polysaccharides together, actually, these are also, this is also a uh, glycosidic bond. So the bond that holds um, carbohydrate monomers together is called a glycosidic bond. Glycosidic bond. So this little blue oxygen right here, this is representing a glycosidic bond. This is representing a glycosidic bond. So we're going to pick up, <laughs> I know I've told you guys, be done with the macromolecules. We are going to finish them. Really, really. Friday, we are finishing them. And then next week, we're going to start cell parts. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Okay, quick, quick question. Oh, let's get some, a couple things. Number one, one question. Was the worksheet helpful, not helpful? Don't ever do that again. Don't ever do it again? No. We'll do, we're going to do more of those, okay? Second thing, just some volunteers to clean the desks. Thank you for your attention. Let's keep up the good work. Still recording on here?